Hello and welcome to another episode of Ottergefühl with me, AJ. Today, I'm here in the countryside, about an hour outside of Frankfurt, and I'm here to test the new Volkswagen T6. Namely, the T6 Multivan Panamericana, like the one here, as well as the T6 Transporter Rockton. What's special about these versions? Well, these are the off-road capable T6 vans. They have all-wheel drive, the VW 4Motion system, they have a jacked up ride height, and you can even get them with a locking mechanical rear diff. So let's find out how well they can cope with these muddy roads that we have here. Are you interested? Come on, let's go! Make sure you go back and watch the videos of the T6 Panamericana and the Rockton as well as some other variants that we've covered at the Hanover Motor Show as well as other full reviews of the T6. But here in the Panamericana, well the face doesn't look too different, it's very similar to the other T6s in the range. A very short bonnet, again very van-like, a large VW grill and uh, logo in the middle of the grill. Down here you have the the sensor for the adaptive cruise control and again because this is the off-road version in the bottom you have this skid, plat, uh, skid plate or this bash plate to again kind of give the idea that this car is off-road capable of course it does help when you're going over some rocks this will prevent the underbody from getting scraped on the side profile well the Panamericana comes with 17 inch alloys as standard and along the edges on the bottom here you have some black uh, cladding to again give the uh, feeling that this is a very off-road capable car and over here on the side you also see the Panamericana badging as well as an interesting sticker so the Panamericana stands at uh, 4.9 meters long that's about 16 feet it's about 1.9 meters wide that's about six foot two inches and it's about two meters tall that's about six foot six inches here at the back again very utilitarian the whole theme of this car is more form follows function, so it's very boxy. You have a very large tailgate, this entire section opens. But down here you have the Panamericana badging again, and another bash plate for the lower part of the bumper. The Panamericana comes with a wide range of petrol and turbo petrol and turbo diesel engines. Um, they're all two, two liter engines, four cylinder. They make anywhere between 150 horsepower to 204 horsepower. This here is the two liter TDI, which makes 204 horsepower. You get options of either five or six speed manual, or in this case, the seven speed DSG. And of course, the four motion all wheel drive system, which we will talk about later. And uh, you can also specify the option of the locking rear mechanical differential. The ride height of the Panamericana has been raised by 20 millimeters and uh, it weighs about 2,200 kilograms. And finally, this car starts at around 48,000 euros, but depending on the options and the engine and transmission that you decide, it can even go upwards of 20, oh, sorry, 62,000 euros. Now let's talk about the four motion all wheel drive system. But before we get to that, let's briefly cover some of the important points which will help us understand this a little bit better. Basically in all modern cars, you have two major components, hardware components, and a bunch of software on top of that, which together help maintain traction. The components are the hydraulic modulator, and the throttle by wire or the fly by wire throttle, whatever you want to call it. On top of that, you have a wide array of software which uses these two elements to maintain traction and to provide better handling and dynamics, such as the all wheel drive in this case, the ABS, EBD, which is electronic brake, brake distribution, 
ESP, electronic stability control, the traction control itself, torque vectoring, as well as, you know, things like hill descent control, hill climb assist. All these things are basically using these two components. The hydraulic modulator pulses the brakes on the disc uh, to make sure that the wheels have traction under heavy braking and the traction control cuts the power of the engine using the throttle by wire to ensure that the wheels are never overwhelmed with too much power and they don't start slipping. Now, with the third component for the 4Motion, we have an additional element called the Haldex or the uh, Borg Warner coupling. What it essentially is, is an electronic clutch. Now, in a standard 4x4, you have the engine mounted longitudinally, which means that the bonnet of the truck or the van or the car would be much longer than it is right now. Then the power would be transmitted through a drive shaft to, through the transmission and the gearbox to a transfer case, which then would split the power to the front and rear axles. Furthermore, the front and rear axles can also have locking differentials to provide a much more capable off-road uh, chassis. But the problem with this is it's a lot of components which makes it heavier and because of the transfer case the body has to be higher. In fact, most of the traditional 4x4s had a ladder frame chassis with the body on top. But recently, the trend, like you would know, is that the market really wants SUVs and all companies including Volkswagen have noticed a trend in people wanting to buy more SUVs and especially SUVs with four-wheel drive. Of course, for 90% of the people, you don't need a real 4x4. I mean, this is probably the maximum amount of off-roading that you would re ever really need. But to ensure that they have a product which meets the customer requirements in the market, the Haldex system fits in perfectly. It takes the same pre-existing transverse mounted front wheel drive engine layout. It just adds a propeller shaft and a rear differential. Now, the propeller shaft is connected to the transaxle, so it's always spinning with the front wheels. But between the ed end of the uh, propeller shaft and the rear differential is basically the Haldex clutch. This Haldex clutch is an electronic unit which uses the same information and the data from all the other systems that we talked about. So when, when it senses that the front wheels are slipping, or depending on the program that you have selected, if it's in off-road mode, <clears throat> the coupling engages and then the power is also transmitted to the back wheels, thus becoming all-wheel drive. So this, of course, also means that the front wheels are never decoupled and it's always only a 50-50 distribution at max. The benefits of this system, well, first of all, the company doesn't have to ever re-engineer anything. They, could, they can just bolt this uh, component in and plug it in with the rest of the system, I mean, basically speaking, and it works fine. Furthermore, it has the same efficiency as a front wheel drive car. It's the same compact engine layout. And for example, in this vehicle, you have a higher ride height. You also have the optional mechanical locking rear diff, and you have underbody panels to protect the engine, the gearbox, the fuel tank, and things like that. So for 90% of the time, for 90% of the people, this is way more than enough. So here we have the key, a small badging over here as well, a really tall door but it opens quite wide. You have a cubby hole down here, really large, another one down here as well. There's plenty of storage spaces in this car, I'll show you that later on. Materials up here are actually quite nice, they're soft, fit and finish is also pretty good. You have another textured element here the door handle and the window uh, switches over there. Of course, only the front two windows. And looking inside the cabin, as standard you get cloth and Alcantara seats, but here you have the optional uh, dual tone leather uh, seats. And we would obviously recommend to go with the standard um, Alcantara and uh, fabric seats. But overall, because this is the Panamericana, this is more aimed towards a consumer. It has a lot of creature comforts. It's not luxurious, I would say, so to speak, but it's certainly not Spartan either.
Let's hop inside and take a closer look. Let's get inside. You have a step here and a handle here to help you get up. Excuse my incredibly dirty shoes, but hey, as standard, you also get rubber mats, so you can just take them out and hose them down clean. The seat has uh, adjustments for lumbar support and uh, the usual things, as well as memory. The seating position itself is really high. Of course, I mean, you can see that I had to take a step up. The seat itself is upright, your knees are up, so it's, it's a very commanding position. But uh, the steering wheel is, you know, it's not excessively large. It's pretty much the same as you would get in a regular Volkswagen car. I'll talk more about the steering later on and how it feels when I'm driving. But apart from that, it's a very familiar place, I would say. Um, the build quality up here is okay, but the material itself is hard plastic. But you do have some nicer elements, like this brushed metal effect plastics running along the center of the dashboard. The entire dashboard itself is again very rectangular, very little curves and things like that. And, well, yeah, come on inside and let's take a closer look. So let's take a look at the dashboard. So here you have the tachometer on the left and the speedometer on the right. They're both analog dials. And you have a screen in the middle, which, as expected, you have a lot of the standard functions. We'll take a look at that again later. And like I said, the steering wheel is of good size. It has a good grip. You have your buttons to navigate through the, the menus over here, as well as uh, to control your adaptive cruise control speed limiter and volume and track seeking, the usual things like that. There are no paddle shifters. Um, and then moving to this side, we have large rectangular air vents for the air conditioning. This car comes as standard with the three zone climate control. So you have two zones up here and one in the back. You have your buttons for your auto shutoff parking sensors. And this is the seven speed DSG. The Gear shift is mounted in the dashboard, so you have a lot of empty space here as well. Then continuing over to the side, we have the seat heater buttons and the defoggers and the vent controls and the climate control unit itself over here. And here we have some special buttons for the four motion uh, system, like I said, and we'll take a closer look at that again later. And the infotainment system. And this car has a lot of cubby holes. There's so many of them. Count them out with me. There's one over here with felt lining, so you can keep perhaps your sunglasses and things like that. Going down here, you have one more over here, which has a USB port and a 12 volt power socket. You have another drawer with cup holders, although the cup holders are a bit small and a bit shallow, so it does shake quite a bit. And over here you have another uh, cubby hole over here to put your user manual. This is quite shallow and quite narrow, but you have a full-sized glove box down here as well. And this is also cooled, so you can keep uh, bottles of water and things like that. Actually, I missed one because there's so many. You have another cup holder down here, which is much longer and much deeper so here you can fit your bottle and it doesn't move and while we're down here you'll notice that the handbrake is also right by the driver's seat so let's get to these three buttons this is quite obvious you have the button to turn off your stability control like I was telling you earlier which would use the the, the hydraulic modulator and the throttle by wire and this is the diff lock for the rear differential. This is a mechanical diff lock and it's only for the rear differential like I was telling you earlier. You can engage it with this button really easily and this is the hill descent control again which uses the all-wheel drive Haldex clutch and individually braking the wheels to see which one has the most traction and ensure that you are going downhill uh, at a steady and controlled rate. This also you can activate very easily with this button. So this is the infotainment system. Again, no new surprises. You have your radio, media, telephone, navigation. Again, this is the Volkswagen navigation, which is a really good system. You have the traffic assist, so it'll help you uh, navigate through areas which are fast flowing. You have Carnet, 
so you can connect online if you have the data connection or you use your phone media control you can store images sound and general settings again nothing new nothing special this is the standard VW system more or less and it's really responsive the screen itself is is not glossy as you can see it's it's matte so that it doesn't leave any fingerprints I think this is a great way to do it and you have hotkey functions to get to your uh, to, to the uh, different options really easily a volume knob on the left and a knob for example if you're in the navigation to zoom in and out of the map much more easily while on the go instead of trying to pinch because that is always very distracting when you're driving when you have to pinch and zoom it's much easier to just use the knob and SD cards to load your maps so let's take a closer look at the center screen in the dashboard you have your navigation you have your telephone several assistant functions like side assist driver alert front assist and you can change your settings for all of these uh, systems that you have speedometers and to control your adaptive cruise control and audio okay let's hop into the back you have a sliding door gives you access a really wide opening there's a, there's a sliding door on the opposite side as well a handle to help you step up and into the seat this is not an electric door but you do have the soft close function and you have oops there we go a manual shade the seats again like I mentioned these are the optional leather seats you can get the standard um, Alcantara and fabric seats if you want you have armrests which you can alter the height at which they stay and you have metal uh, checkered flooring so that it's again very utilitarian and while we're down here this is the optional table that you get in the middle um, it has a lot of storage spaces as you can see as on the sides as well you can bring this up and turn this around so that it becomes a bit of a picnic table you have beverage holders on either side and you can even turn this to to either side if you want and let's put this out of the way and you can also slide this and move this around because this is on um, these uh, sliders Ugh. in fact all of the seats are on these um, these uh, uh, these channels these sliders so you can swivel them around you can move them forward or back and you can really make your own uh, personalized configuration and this is more of a lifestyle vehicle so you can really push the seats up front and there'll be plenty of space in the back to fit your uh, mountain bikes or maybe some uh, uh, camping equipment and things like that you can really have your own configuration with the seats like I said because they're on channels and these guides you can swivel them around you can put the table in the middle to have like a, uh, a lounge where you can talk and uh, face to face with your uh, passengers or you can push everything to the front and have plenty of space in the back to load bicycles or camping equipment things like that this car has a really good sense of adventure about it I think it's like a spiritual successor to the original VW van or minibus or whatever you want to call it and I think that's the biggest appeal of this car let's pop up on the hatch it's manual and like I mentioned because of the versatility of the of the configuration of the seats when you have the seats back here there really isn't much place to keep any luggage but of course you can see that you still have the checkered metal flooring so it's again very rugged you have a 12 volt power socket to the right side and if you remove this panel over here you will see two uh, tabs if you pull number one then you can topple the seat like so and if you pull number two then you can move the seat around on the channels as well
So let's take a drive in the T6 Pan Americano. So we have the 2 liter Turbo 4 TDI, which makes 204 horsepower. The 4 motion all wheel drive with the locking rear diff, 7 speed DSG automatic. So, first impressions. Well, it you can certainly feel the size of the car. I mean, it's really large. The interior is so big. But because of the steering wheel and the dashboard that you're looking at, all the things you touch are very car-like and very, you know, Volkswagen-like. It's it's easy to forget that you're driving such a big vehicle. And yes, we're on these really rocky tracks right now. I do notice that I can hear a lot of squeaks and rattles actually coming from the car. Um, perhaps it's the clamp with the uh, on the for the chairs, the seating with the guide rails. So maybe it's because of that. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of good sound insulation, so you don't really hear too much of the road noise or the engine noise. It's just the rattles from the inside. It handles potholes pretty well. The seating position is also really good for this kind of driving, especially when you're driving off-road. You have so much of visibility, really tall body, so really big windshield, really big windows, and you're sitting, you're sitting upright. Your seat is also really uh, at a higher position. So it actually gives you a really good overview. And because it's a van, there's a very short bonnet in the front, so you can really see what's coming up right in front of you. So that really helps. Yes, 20 millimeters is not, you know, such a big difference over the standard car, especially if you have, you know, a full family or you have your friends in the back and you have your camping equipment. Because of the weight, it's probably not going to, you know, keep, retain its 20 millimeters of extra ride height. But, you know, you can, it, it does have um, underbody protection, like I said. You can even spec to have extra protection for the, for the bottom of the, uh, the chassis. And this four-wheel drive, like I was saying, you know, if you're going to drive in tracks like this, it's more than enough. To be, to be very honest, I don't think, you know, even if you do have this kind of a car, you're not going to be using it on a daily basis in this kind of an environment. It's only on those 10 days in a year where you go for your ski holiday or you go for your beach holiday that you would maybe need this four-wheel drive for that 10 minutes when you're getting off-road. But actually here, you see that we have a really high ridge in the middle and the tracks have dug themselves in pretty deep and there's trenches on the either side but I don't hear or feel the uh, bottom of the, of, the, of the car scraping so I guess you know 20 millimeters is helping out of course it's just me and Michelle in the car right now so it's very light <laughs> so I think it's you know it's it's good enough for what most people would need then let's talk about the steering wheel. I'm actually pretty happy with the steering wheel. It's got really good feedback. And it's again, it's a matter of personal taste, but I prefer steering wheels which are a little bit heavier. And this certainly is a lot more heavier. And again, it's good, uh, quick acting. As you can see, we made a pretty tight right-hand turn. So it's maneuverable. The turning circle is also uh, you know, very uh, handy to use because it's not that large, even though it's a very large vehicle. But yes, you can really feel the ruts and the stones uh, of, of, uh, on the road through the steering wheel. So overall, it is a really good car to take off road. And you know, it's like I said earlier, this is kind of like the spiritual successor to the original VW Vanagon or the minibus or whatever you want to call it and I think in that way it's it has that spirit of adventure of you know it's kind of urging you to say hey you know pack your stuff let's go on an adventure let's go out into the woods let's go to the beach let's explore new places and that's I think it's really fun however you know I keep I keep thinking the 62 or 65 with all the options more than that 65,000 euros for this car is really expensive I mean it's a big car it has a lot of uh, hardware a lot of tech and you know it's Volkswagen so it has that brand as well but I mean it's up to you and if you're gonna be you know using this car really often like it's meant to be on off 
uh, on uh, tracks like this or on vacations or on long drives, then perhaps it is a good car to buy and invest in spending that much money. But if it's not, and it's just going to be like a vacation car, then maybe you can just rent one instead. I mean, that's just what I would do. Apart from that, this car is comfortable. Uh, it does have good sound insulation. Like I said, the seats are really supportive, really comfortable. You have armrests, like I was showing you, and you can adjust the height of them with the rollers on the side. So it is really comfortable. The suspension is a bit stiff, and unfortunately, we haven't really had a chance to test this car out on the highway or on a mountain road or in the city. And you can watch Thomas's review of the uh, the other T6 that he's done, so maybe you can get an idea of that. But it is a bit stiff. I mean, there is no drive mode selector as such uh, to change the adaptive dampers or anything like that. So this is the standard suspension mode. And with that, it is a bit stiff. And um, I think it's the seats that are cushioning me rather than the suspension. But hey, I think it's a compromise when you are uh, going off-road. There's always a little bit of compromise between comfort and ride height or ground clearance. But overall, this is a good car and let's jump into the Rockton and let's see how that compares with this. So here we have the T6 Transporter Rockton. So like the Panamericana, this is based on the regular T6 Transporter, but whereas the Panamericana was 20 millimeters higher, this is 30 millimeters higher. And because this is the more light commercial vehicle version, you get just hard plastic in the front, just one strip of shiny chrome on the grill. But overall, it's again, more form follows function and more utilitarian than even the Panamericana. The Rockton as standard gets 16 inch steel wheels with off-road tires and as you go down the side again you'll notice that it doesn't have any uh, black cladding on the bottom and over here instead of a third window you have the Rockton badging and this car as standard gets a mechanical locking rear diff whereas it was an option in the Panamericana. It also gets as standard underbody protection for the engine, the gearbox, fuel tank and the silencer. So this is more off-road capable, more utilitarian, more commercial vehicle oriented. So let's take a look at the back. Like the Panamericana, this also gets a soft closed trunk. And unlike the Panamericana, this only has one row of back seats. So that means there's a lot more space in the back. You have this movable mesh uh, divider so you can loosen the bolts here and again with these guides and these channels you can move the seats and this um, divider back and forth and unlike the Panamericana this has more rugged robust vinyl flooring although you know there's this, to a certain extent this ruggedness also means poorer build quality before we get into the interiors let's take a quick look at some of the other color options that you get with the Rockton this here is an orange color and at least what's left of it. And over here you see a yellow, but again, it's completely covered in dirt. But hey, I think this dirty look kind of suits it. And this is another color, it's a darker gray and it has the standard body, which means that there is only one sliding door. And our test car, it has the optional twin sliding doors on both sides. So let us know, which is your favorite color? The Rockton is a little bit cheaper than the Panamericana. It starts at 45,000 euros and can go upwards of 52,000 euros. It comes with either the five or six speed manual or a seven speed DSG, similar to the Panamericana that we saw. And this here is the two liter TDI, which makes 204 horsepower. And we have the six speed manual. Of course, like I mentioned, it comes with the, uh, 
the four motion all wheel drive system. And this is a little bit lighter as well compared to the Panamericana. This is 2,100 kilograms roundabout, whereas the Panamericana is about 100 to 200 kilograms heavier than that. Now let's take a seat in the front of the Rockton. So unlike the Panamericana, because this is more aimed at maybe construction sites or just overall commercial vehicles, the seat surface is really rough, it's just fabric, and you have leatherette on the outside. And let's jump inside. The interior is very similar to the Panamericana, but in many places you can see that it's a lot more cheaper. For example, there are no covers for the cubby holes that we saw earlier. I have some on the left side here as well. There's a 12 volt power socket on the top. Your six speed manual gear knob here. Nothing else around here, but you have a cubby hole over here. Two more shelves and a glove box. And you have a USB port auxiliary input and air conditioning for the front as well as air conditioning for the back and this touchscreen system is again uh, optional depends on which one you spec this is the top end which is very similar to the one in the Panamericana another place where the Rockton cuts some costs is with the seats they're all manually adjustable to slide front and back to lift and lower the seat as well as reclining the back in both the Panamerica and the Rockton that we drove today. The steering wheel column is also fully adjustable, so finding a comfortable driving position is really easy. All right, let's hop into the back seat of the Rockton. It opens wide, but there is no handle, so you're gonna have to clamber up yourself. The door as well still retains the soft close function. And like I mentioned earlier, in the standard Rockton, you only get one sliding door on one side but you can also specify the optional second sliding door if you want. The seats are continued in the same material in the back seats, like the ones we saw in the front. You have a very rough fabric, so it doesn't tear easily, it doesn't get dirty, it's easy to clean. Again, very utilitarian. And the floor as well is the same vinyl that we saw in the back, and you have the checkered metal along the edges and the sills. And honestly, with the grill in the back especially, it kind of makes me feel like I'm in a police van and I'm being arrested. Now we're taking a spin in the T6 Transporter Rockton. First impressions, well, honestly, the seats are a lot more comfortable than I thought they would be. And you know, looks can be deceiving, right? Of course, the material is a lot more rough. And perhaps if you're wearing a t-shirt or uh, shorts and sitting on the seat, it might feel a bit uncomfortable and scratchy, but it's actually really soft and supportive. Apart from that, um, this car is lighter and um, a lot cheaper than the Panamericana. And that really shows because it's quite loud in here at times. But at this, on the other hand, it's a lot more capable of road. As you can see, we're going through these deep mud ruts. It's very squishy. So I think this is a good time to try out the locking rear diff. So we have the six-speed manual. I'll talk more about the ga uh, gearbox a little bit later because I'm not so happy with it. Anyway, now we push this button and I have a symbol on my dashboard which says that the rear differential has been locked. Put it in first gear. Again, this is the Haldex system, so there is no transfer case, and consequently there is no uh, low range. So it's just the first gear on the standard transmission, the six speed that I'm using. Um, and honestly, it's really okay because it's doing quite well in this. 
this engine has 204 horsepower, like I mentioned earlier. So that definitely also helps. And you keep the throttle running so that the engine is uh, in its optimum torque uh, range. So it's delivering the most amount of power and torque. And the turbochargers are spooled up. And yeah, you can really feel that this car has plenty of grip and traction and it's moving really well. It's sliding a little bit, but that's okay. We are on the off-road tires, so that also kind of makes it a bit uh, easier to, trans, uh, to traverse this kind of terrain. As you can see, it's sliding around quite a bit. Now we're heading into some deeper rutted tracks with some water. The Rockton gets a 30 millimeter increase in ride height as compared to the 20 millimeters in the uh, Panamericana. So it's really useful in situations like this. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I mean, I'm in a van, you know, essentially. It's not a SUV, it's not a pickup truck. And I'm going off road. So hooray for that. On the other hand though, the gearbox is really notchy. It doesn't really fall into gear that easily. It's a bit uh, soft and loose around the edges. It's not crisp. It's not a short throw either. But you know, this is a van. This is not going to... Uh, you shouldn't really expect to have a short throw gearbox or anything like that. And now we're going into a deeper puddle of mud. Let's go a little bit faster, splash some water around. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Up ahead, we have come. We have to come to a complete stop. So, this again will help us determine how well the Rockton can get up and going in the dirt. Because once you're going off road and you have momentum, it's always easier to keep going and climb over obstacles. It's when you stop in the mud and you have to get up again. That's when your problems start. So let's test that out now. Let's wait for our colleagues to complete their part of the journey of the stretch. Okay, now let's go. Let's give it some more gas. <laughs> it's really slippery. But there's no water coming in, so completely tight seals. The air intake is also at a higher position in the engine bay, so there is plenty of clearance and it doesn't get waterlogged. I think now I can turn off the diff lock because we're on a much more solid uh, flatter surface. Another thing I noticed while driving this before is that this car is really loud and you can hear a lot of rattles on the inside plus you can hear a lot of the uh, road noise and the tire noise that's filtering into this cabin. So it's, it's not as comfortable in that sense because it's a lot louder but, um, you know, you have to make some sacrifices, including sacrifices regarding ease of use because the steering wheel does not have any shortcut buttons. Everything is completely operated with the buttons over here. Anyway, we're getting back onto a dirty, muddy section of this track. So let's engage the diff lock. Making this turn is a bit tricky, but let's see how it goes. Because it's a van and the wheelbase is really stretched out, approach and departure angles are also really good. So you have very little chance of bottoming out and hitting the bumper or scraping it. Furthermore, you also have the underbody protection, like I said earlier, which is standard on the Rockton. So your, uh, the essential components like the engine, the fuel tank, the gearbox, the silencer, the differential, and the side sills are all covered with extra protection. So, it, it gives you a lot of confidence to really push this car. And of course, you know, it's it's meant to be, this is probably the maximum that it's meant to be able to handle. And since it's doing it so easily, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm fairly impressed. Of course, a better test would be to actually load this van up with heavy equipment, like chainsaws or whatever, motorcycles or everything in the back, and then try to drive over this. Uh, maybe with the extra weight, things will be a little bit different. I don't know. I cannot really tell you that because I haven't tried that out. But on the whole, 
for what this car is supposed to be doing, for what it's meant to accomplish, I think it does it really well. Let's summarize today's drive of the T6, namely the Panamericana and this, the Rockton. First of all, I think they have a lot of things going for them because they have a very capable off-road chassis with four-wheel drive, locking rear diffs, a raised ride height, underbody protection, things like that, which definitely make them off-road capable. However, especially the price point of the Panamericana, with all the options, if you load it out completely, can even touch and cross 70,000 euros. And in my opinion, I think it's a bit too much for a van. And of course, that's the more lifestyle-oriented uh, consumer product version of the T6. And even though this is much more cheaper than the Panamericana, I don't really see myself buying this for private use. So overall, you know, it's, it's kind of confusing for me because I think these are good vehicles, and you know they certainly have a lot of space a lot of utility but if i really needed something like this i would probably just rent it instead of buying it but hey let me know what you guys think and put your comments in the section below also make sure you follow our facebook and instagram page we upload a lot of pictures that we take while we're filming our projects so you always get a sneak peek at what's coming ahead thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time